Hi there, my name is Paul Therrien. I have worked in financial services in one capacity or another over the last three decades. I have worked in collections, sales, underwriting, and risk. Today, I'm the founder of a new brand in Canada, Haystacks Mortgage, that wants to not just change the experience of consumers, but build a business that is based on ethical business practices to protect our customers, lenders, and the future of our business and industry. I've really debated posting a video about the topic I'm going to discuss, but I think I need to because it impacts all of us both directly and indirectly. And to be clear, I debated posting not because what I'm wanting to discuss is controversial, but more that it will paint a target on my back with other industry professionals. But at the end of the day, someone needs to stand up. And since none have done so yet, well, why shouldn't it be me? Before I dive in, there is one point that we need to all be very clear on. The job of regulators and government is to protect consumers, not industry. Regulators do not and should not serve the needs of industry. They are there to ensure that consumers are treated ethically and that business is conducted within the confines of the law. If industry has an issue with a law or regulation, then they need to step up and demonstrate that the law or the rule is harmful or unnecessary. They are, however, still obligated to follow the rules until such time as they change or the rules change. I also want to point out that every single professional in the real estate and mortgage industry has a duty to report wrongdoing. Not just because the regulator says so, it is the law and it is encoded in our criminal code. If you know of a crime and you do not report it, you are complicit in that crime. Now to the topic, fraud. This is an insidious problem in every part of the country and it continues to grow with real consequences for all Canadians. Some of those consequences are obvious, others not so much. Fraud is a bad word. It's a word that no mortgage professional, lender or regulator likes to hear, never mind dealing with the consequences of this type of crime. And make no mistake, fraud is a crime and there are consequences. Now, everyone in the Haystacks family is already very aware of our zero tolerance policy for fraud. And the recent CBC Marketplace investigation has really only reinforced our position. So let's take a look at the article to examine what was discovered. According to the article, six out of 10 of the realtors in the investigation, not 60% of all realtors, I don't believe that just in this particular investigation, offered to facilitate the closing of the purchase of a home through fraud. Now, even if you factor in that maybe it's one in 10 or one in 20, it's still a staggering number if you consider that one professional is one professional too many committing fraud. Um, and it includes mortgage brokers who either do not do their required due diligence or that openly facilitate transactions such as this. And this is something that we should all be concerned about. The first reason why is the considerable damage that can happen to the consumer. Our customers rely on us for ethical advice that helps them secure a strong financial future. That means securing them a mortgage, providing sound and ethical advice, and ensuring that they are not unduly placed in harm's way. In fact, these are all clearly outlined in consumer protection laws and regulations that apply to mortgage professionals across the country. When a borrower is placed in a mortgage that they cannot truly afford, it creates economic hardship and can even result in the borrower losing their home, their financial standing, and in some cases, even result in the loss of employment or criminal charges. Our lender partners also rely on the quality of the application, information and documentation we provide. While it's true that they also need to do their own due diligence, their requirements don't negate the legal necessity for us to conduct our own. This is not just good business practice, it is required under the law. When we do not do our jobs and a deal is funded that contains fraud, there are consequences for lenders. Most mortgages in Canada are back insured by the government through CMHC, Sagan or Canada Guarantee. That insurance enables these mortgages to be sold as securities or mortgage-backed securities 
and sold on the market to enable lenders to secure new funds to lend. When a mortgage contains fraud, the lender who booked and funded the mortgage is often required to buy the mortgage back at a premium, they're charged a penalty, and if there are consistent issues with their portfolio, they can even lose their investor funding or their rights to sell mortgage-backed securities. That means less lender options, higher rates, and even tighter lending guidelines that only end up frustrating those who are honest and don't conduct fraud. Perhaps an even bigger issue is that the vast majority of those mortgages are, that are backed by Canada, by the Canadian government, um, are, exposes the taxpayer to huge risk. My apologies for the delay there. It's estimated that the government of Canada, our taxpayers, is exposed to almost $1.4 trillion in mortgage debt. And let's put that into perspective. That is almost $400 billion higher than our national debt. So if one in five mortgage transactions in Canada contain some form of fraud, as Stats, Canada, the bankers, and many other associations claim, it means that at minimum there's an excess of about $300 billion in fraudulent mortgages on the books today. So let's put that into perspective again. The mortgage broker community funded about $100 billion, sorry, $180 billion in mortgage volume in 2021. What most mortgage and real estate professionals do not seem to understand is the long-term consequences of this highly inappropriate behavior. And those consequences are tighter regulations, tighter lending guidelines, and perhaps the worst of all, less trust of our profession and our ability to operate ethically. Realtors and brokers work on a 100% commission structure where they are paid based on the closings that occur. As the market becomes more challenging, it does mean less deals and more acceptance of gray areas to drive income and satisfy the borrower's needs. In fact, we even start to see those that are not active, active participants in shady dealings to consider them as an option. If the broker down the street does it and gets away with it, well, why can't I? It's just this one deal, I'll never do it again, and many other things to justify skirting the rules in order to close a mortgage. Sure, it seems innocent enough at the time, but there's no such thing when it comes to protecting our customers, our livelihoods, and in fact, the future of our industry as a whole. Regulators pay attention even when we think they are not, and that's a really good thing because it protects all of us. And as much as realtors and brokers might complain about tightening regulations, the reality is that regulators react to what they see happening. With every complaint they receive, every news story, every report of fraud, they are challenged with how to balance the needs of the industry with protecting the consumer and other players that are exposed to risk. And in the end, regulators will and should be focused first on protecting consumers from being placed in circumstances that could result in harm. That will always mean tighter regulations because when fraud is occurring, it frankly means we are not capable of policing ourselves. So if, as an industry, we want to be taken seriously and respected for the work we do, our focus must always be on doing what is best for our customers and our partners. We have to find ways to work together to find legal and ethical solutions to help house Canadians and protect this industry that provides tens of thousands of Canadians with jobs. Haystacks is the first, and to my knowledge, the only brand in Canada that has defined policies pertaining to fraud and the requirement to report any suspect transactions for review. Our policies are outlined in our franchise agreements and operations manual, and it includes a defined fraud reporting form as approved by regulatory investigators across the country. Why have we taken this position? Well, it's simple, really. We believe that if we are not strict in the approach to the conduct of those professionals who represent our brand, we are really only accomplishing two things. The first, we know most professionals are ethical, and it is 
blindingly unfair that those people be impacted by the poor behaviors of others. The second is a little less obvious, but I personally believe that when a business willingly looks past illegal behavior, they are directly profiting off of the proceeds of crime. It means that profit and money in the short term are more important than the longevity of our industry and most critically is more important than the trust of our customers, lenders and the regulators. Brands will argue that their franchisees are independently owned and operated. It is not their responsibility, even if they know or suspect illegal or unethical behavior, they still look away and may claim franchises independently owned and operated, I'll terminate them. And while there may very well be no legal consequences for the brand, what about the reputation of the brand? What about the sustainability of our industry? What of the ethical responsibilities that a brand has to Canadians? Or am I just too old fashioned to believe that brands have a duty of care to Canadians and those that do should be functioning ethically? I mean, there are numerous leaders in this country that are in positions of great influence. Where's the resounding cry from the top to weed out those are, that are engaged in illegal behavior? Simply put, there doesn't seem to be any, at least not publicly. I asked 16 mortgage professionals that I know from a variety of brands, and the overwhelming response from them was, well, Paul, it's soft fraud. Does it really matter? I mean, everybody's doing it as long as they make their payment, you know, or often they'll say, I do what I can, but at the end of the day, I need to make sure I can close that mortgage and that is the priority. If I don't do it, someone else will. So rather than stepping up to the plate, we are seeing people just shrug it off and justify some measure of fraud, no matter how small, to stay competitive. If those brokers that are committing fraud are held to account, removed from the industry, and the rules are enforced at all levels, well, the need to break the rules to be competitive no longer exists. I had some that tried to pin the blame on the unrealistic rules that govern mortgage lending in Canada. And I hate to say it, but this is common trope heard from the industry that has zero merit. The issue with housing affordability in Canada is more directly impacted by fraud than the rules in place. In fact, most of the rules in place are there to try to combat fraud and protect our banking system, our property market, and the taxpayer. Today, it is still easier to obtain a mortgage than it was when I started in the industry. Way back when, when you, you needed to have a minimum down payment of 10%. Your GDS and TDS were maxed at 32 and 40, and we used net income to debt service. We also used to calculate the cost of dependence into the equation so as to protect the futures of children. Second homes and vacation properties were allowed, rental properties too, but you had to put down at least 35% from your own savings. You couldn't borrow. You had to prove six months reserves. And if you owned more than three properties combined, they were treated as commercial lending products. Today, none of those rules exist in Canada. It is easier to get a mortgage today than it was 30 years ago. And the sheer volume of debt being accumulated by homeowners across Canada is all the proof that's needed. Fraud exacerbates unrealistic increases in values. No one can afford to buy the home or qualify for the mortgage. Is the home really worth that value? If a customer is placed in a home that they can barely afford, what are the other significant impacts to their economic future? What happens if there's a family emergency, unexpected repairs, or other surprises that can sometimes run in the tens of thousands of dollars? Most brokers would simply state that with the increase in value of the home, the customer can just access the equity. The thing is, though, in an era of increasing rates, high inflation, and the fact that the customer was already financially stressed or house poor, means that accessing the equity is not quite so cut and dry. So the solution is often to place the customer in a private mortgage, which, while it can help some, for most they end up on a treadmill only ever making ends meet and still unable to weather any financial challenges. Simply put, that is not only bad for the customer in the long term, but it makes all mortgage professionals look predatory. 
I believe that our role as mortgage professionals is to not just secure home financing for our clients. We have a responsibility to ensure that we are not putting our clients in harm's way. We have a responsibility to put the needs of our customers and lenders ahead of earning commissions. We know that as rates increase and the property market continues to experience some challenges, getting deals done can be difficult. But that doesn't mean that we suddenly forget our ethics and legal obligations. It just means that we need to be better and stay focused on what matters most, the customer, not the commission. At Haystacks, we always say, focus on the customer first, the money will follow. And we mean it. By focusing first on the customer and providing sound ethical advice, we protect our business, our lender partners, and most importantly, we protect our clients. Sure, we may have to turn away a deal, but we need to remember that the commission on one deal is not worth our careers, our business, or the future of our families. It is especially not in the interests of the wider public, our lenders, or customers when we commit or facilitate fraud. Just because somebody doesn't qualify to buy a home today doesn't mean that we can't create a plan, a plan or a path to home ownership for them that will see them achieve their dreams. ASTACs will always work to support our members and their continued drive to be successful, but it must be done the right way. Thanks for listening. Um, stay tuned for more videos and for our soon to launch Mortgage Matters with Peter and Paul podcast. I'm just going to throw that in there. But in regards to this topic, I want to be clear. The vast majority of professionals are ethical and they do the right thing. But we as an industry and a particularly leadership at the other brands needs to do a better job of standing up for the ethics and for doing what's right. Those people who are part of our brands that do not participate in this behavior should not be negatively impacted because we're so busy turning a blind eye. We should never be putting profits before people because if we take care of our customers, we take care of our agents, and we always do the right thing, the money that we earn has more value and we are doing a better job of contributing to the betterment of Canadian society. This video is all just my opinion. Take it or leave it.